Happy New Year, friends. Welcome to all of you, whether if this is your first Sunday or whether you've been here for many years. Wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We are also a congregation in the United Church of Christ that believes that God is still speaking. So one of our goals is to get quiet inside and open our hearts that we might hear the voice of God, maybe even today in this place. I extend an especially warm welcome to the members of our web community who are able to join us this day. Happy New Year to all of you as well. What we're doing this morning is just a tiny bit different than what we usually do at 10. What we're going to do this morning is what we usually do at 8 o'clock. So if you have come to the 8 o'clock worship service before, you'll say, well, yeah, they tweaked a few things, but that's pretty much it. But if you have never come to the 8 o'clock service, this is a lovely introduction so that perhaps at some point in the future you may want to attend the 8 o'clock service. So the big difference is you've not lost your worship bulletin. There is no paper worship bulletin today. The worship bulletin and every screen up on the slide will tell us and take us through the whole entire service. So all you really have to do is look up and read and sing or sit as I encourage you. Um, we're also blessed to have communion this, this Sunday, the first Sunday in the month. And if things are just a little bit um, different, that's okay. We can make it work. One of the blessings, I think, of the 8 o'clock service is that it's not so much... It's always an offering when we, when we worship God, but this is a little bit more of an interactive worship of God today because there'll be opportunities for folks to share some of their thoughts, some of their ideas when it comes to the sermon discussion time. So I welcome you all with a warm heart and um, invite now a couple of folks to come up and give some information that will be of use to the community in the coming days and weeks. Good morning, everyone. My name is Troy McGee, and I'm here on behalf of the Deacon this morning. I'm here to remind everyone as the first Sunday of the month, we collect um, d for the discretionary fund. This fund um, helps provide support for members and friends of First Parish who need assistance during difficult times. These envelopes have been provided for that purpose. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Jo Nancy Gunn for the Flower and Altar team, and I have three things for you. The 2017 flower sign-up sheets are posted by near the office, and there are the last two Sundays in January are still open for those who are interested. The third thing is we would invite those who have had ordered poinsettias to take them home after the service today, or if they're out there, adopt a poinsettia and take it home. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, I have several announcements today, so um, I want to run through this, and hopefully I don't forget anything, but Deborah's going to back me up if I do. Uh, the first thing I want to make sure that you put on your calendars is that our annual affirmation uh, meeting, our annual meeting is on uh, January 22nd uh, with a snow date of the 29th. So um, as you know, uh, it is really important that we have a uh, quorum or we can't have the meeting. So please mark it on your calendar, January 22nd. Okay, um, important stuff. Along with those some lines, as you probably know, we've been, the budget task force has been um, working hard on the, um, the budget. And uh, we would like to invite you to what we call a budget hearing uh, the next Sunday and the following Sunday. So the two Sundays leading up. Now, uh, next Sunday uh, will be uh, one at the 8 o'clock service as well. So um, if you would like to know how the Budget Task Force has um, taken the money and applied it to the um, request for our budget, it's an important meeting for you to attend. And we'd like to have people attend these meetings prior to the annual meeting so that the annual meeting doesn't 
uh, get too bogged down with uh, budget questions that we can answer at these uh, hearings. Yes, and Ms. Robert. Rick, are those budget meetings right after worship? Yes, they are. I love that guy. The, the uh, budget uh, meeting is going to be held directly after our service. Um, first, go get some coffee and say hello to people. And about 1130, we're going to come back into the, um, into the sanctuary and do our hearings. OK. Um, Another thing, the new uh, messenger has come out, the January messenger. And in that messenger, there are uh, uh, several articles that I would like you to pay attention to. All of them, obviously, are fantastic. Uh, but uh, informationally, for the search committee, uh, there, uh, Deborah has uh, laid out several things, and I have um, laid out some things as well. Um, Several of you have come forward and uh, requested that they uh, be put on the list for the budget, for the, um, excuse me, for the search committee. And for that, I'm very grateful. We have, as you know, extended the time for people to sign up into January. And uh, we decided that uh, the um, deadline would be January 22nd. So uh, please uh, think about that. Tied into that, you got this little handout. This handout is, um, a uh, workshop on uh, January 11th. It is a Wednesday. It's at 6:30. It's going to be led by uh, the Reverend Deborah Blood, who is our uh, conference uh, minister for the uh, Maine Central UCC Conference, and uh, it will be an extremely wonderful workshop. It is a time for everybody to come. It's not just for people on the search committee, although I encourage them to come as well. It is open to everybody. Just like I say for the all ministry meeting, everybody's welcome. Okay, so please put that on your calendar and think about coming to that. Um, I think that's it for me. If I forget anything, Deborah will help me. I would be remiss for us to go any further without introducing to you and welcoming our interim music director, Clarissa Brown. If you can, more than a hand there, there she goes. Clarissa was very gracious to play for us on Christmas Eve at both the five and the seven o'clock service. And she is also going to work with us every all the Sundays up until I think the second week in June, which we're hoping we'll have some good significant news about a new music director by that point. But so as we would not be rushed and not have any inconsistency, we're looking forward to having Clarissa be part of our staff team and we welcome you so much and I hope you all will take a chance to greet her after the service. Thank you. If there are no other important messages, then I would invite all who are able to please stand and join in the responsive call to worship, which you will see up on the screen. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of one who brings good tidings. We receive good tidings of joy words of peace, a message of salvation. Break forth into singing, for God has comforted the people, brought bloom to the wasteland, shown strength in all the nations. Word of the infant born in Bethlehem is our good news. Christ is born, the prophet's hopes are made flesh and all our longings are made human in joy. Rejoice and be glad, for Christ is born today. You don't even have to open your hymnal because the words are going to be right up there, however you prefer.
let us, to get, let us continue together in prayer with their unison prayer of invocation. All God, beyond all knowing, grant us today new glimpses of who you are and what you intend for us to be. You draw us irresistibly toward the light. We are attracted to your revelation in the humble child of Bethlehem. We need the sense of purpose you engender among us as a community in faith. Come, holy mystery, to reveal as much of your truth as we can stretch to understand and receive into our lives. Amen. The congregation may be seated. If we say we have no sin, the truth is not in us. Let us open our hearts on this Communion Sunday to join together in our unison prayer of confession. Holy One, we confess that we have been caught up in the ways of the world instead of looking to our as a way to guide our life we ignore them as outdated or irrelevant to our modern lives forgive us for our judgments and misconceptions forgive us for not working on ourselves on our own lives call us back to your way of life O oh god a way of love commitment, respect, and forgiveness. Call us back to a way of life that honors you and the creation and guides us to better love others. In the name of Jesus the Christ, who fulfilled the new promise of new life, amen. God's promise in Christ is made yesterday, is good today, and will last into tomorrow. In Jesus the Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, as we begin this sacred meal together, I just want you to know that everyone is welcome at this table. It is our custom here that when we receive the bread, we partake of it. I'm going to say this correctly, excuse me. When we take, when we get the bread, we hold it and we wait so that all of us can partake together as a sign of our unity in Christ. And when we receive the cup, we partake as we receive it individually, which celebrates the divine and unique creation of God in each one of us. Let us enter into this holy time with our hearts open. That's my bad. They wanted to wait. I said, no, come forward. If you could just sit for a moment. Thank you. I apologize. 
Peace to this house and to all for whom this is your spiritual home. The Holy One says, why spend your wages and still not be satisfied? Why spend money and still be hungry? Listen to me and do what I say, and uh, you will enjoy the best food of all. Listen now, my people, and come to me. Come to me, and you will have life. Hear also these words of Jesus the Christ. I am the bread of life. Anyone who comes to me shall not hunger, and anyone who believes in me shall never thirst. Brothers and sisters, this table is open to all who confess Jesus as the Christ and seek to follow in Christ's way. Come to this sacred table, not because you must, but because you may. Come, not because you are fulfilled, but because in your emptiness you stand in need of God's mercy and assurance. Come, not to express an opinion, but to seek a presence and to pray for the Spirit. Come to this table then, brothers and sisters, as you are. Partake and share. It is spread for you and me that we might again know that God has come to us and shared our common lot and has invited us to join the people of God's new age. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, your whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. We remember that on the night of desertion and betrayal, Jesus took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Consecrate now by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, these gifts of bread and cup, and bless us that as we receive them at this table, we may offer you our faith and praise. We may be united with Christ and with one another, and we may continue faithful in all things. In the strength that Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. <clears throat> Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ, which is new life. There is gluten-free option on the trays so that everyone might partake. Ministering now to you in Christ's name, we give you this bread.
Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life that Christ offers. This is the cup of forgiveness poured out in love. Ministering now to you in his name, we give you this cup. Okay, I made another mistake. <laughs> Nobody's perfect, least of all me. I asked for you to wait. So we partake together as a sign of our unity in Christ. Let us rejoice and receive this gift together. When we receive it, we take it individually.
Let us join together now in our prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. At this time, the children may go with their teachers to their classes. The scripture for today is Psalm 8. It's found on page 455 in your pew hymnals, if you wish to, or pew Bibles, if you wish to follow it. It'll also be up on the screen. Uh, you can join me in reading it when I uh, read the scripture to you. We don't know when David wrote this psalm, and obviously it's stemmed from his experience as a young shepherd. We can only imagine him sitting in a field, middle of the night, watching over his sheep looking up at the stars and being amazed at the immensity of what he was beholding above him. David tells us to worship the Lord because although we are small and insignificant, the Lord has graciously thought of us and cared for us and tells us to worship the Lord because his name is majestic in all the earth and because he has graciously crowned us with glory and majesty. reading of Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings? that you are so mindful of them, mortals, that you care for them. Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all the sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. May God bless the reading of his scriptures. Our second lesson today comes from the book of Ecclesiastes in chapter 3. I would invite you to join with me and read the scripture as you see it on the screen. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, and a time to ref and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, 
a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in their toil. Thanks be to God for these lessons, given that we might have life and have it abundantly. Amen. So at 8 o'clock, what we usually do is we ask a couple of the deacons to get the microphone, similar to the way we do at the prayer time, and we open it up and we think about those scriptures that we have just read and heard, and we think a little intentionally, with intention, with prayerful attention as well as intention. And then after a few moments, we say, what, if anything, have these scriptures bubbled up or brought forth in your spiritual awareness as you've heard them this day? Well, we have somebody who's brave. We have two people who are brave. Absolutely. Thank you. Carol. For me, it speaks of the need to take time just to be, to be joyous in the beauty around us. Um, I know I get so busy with the snow in particular um, that sometimes we forget to look at the beauty around us. Thank you. Um, first of all, I thought of Paul Simon <laughs> singing that, and the other piece for me is um, that towards the end of that scripture, it said um, that we don't know from beginning to end how, from be is it working? Yes, you just said From to beginning it. to end how, um, how God has made things, and it's a it's like he gives us surprises. He gives me surprises. Um, the, the end of the summer, um, Rick found his family. And w we never thought that that was going to happen. And yet, it was such a great gift from God. So I, get, I know that I get gifts all the time from him, and I'm really grateful about that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's do that, but let's bring the mic down here so we're ready next time. Great. Go ahead, Mac. So, especially in Ecclesiastes, you see this, these great, like, beautiful words coming out. And then, for me, there's, like, these tire screeches where things come to, the, to a halt, where all of a sudden it talks about there's a time for hate and there's a time for war. And so... Uh, you know, you hate injustice, so I guess I get that a little bit, but um, those, are, those are passages I struggle with because, you know, it, it, especially right now where there's just so much violence going on, it's hard to accept that there's a time for. Yes. It's, it's a big challenge. 
And I think because of that wonderful song that so many of us grew up with listening to, it kind of became one of those, I don't know if it was really part of the rebellious uh, 70s or not, but it was a way to, I think at that point, it was a way to try to bring some context and some balance to some things that had been really kind of out of balance through those big transitions of those years. I always found it very special um, and reassuring that biblical scripture was put into a tune and a song that became then sung all over the world, most people not even knowing that those were biblical verses. But you're right, it's not just a nice little easy bow at the top. There's a lot of personal discernment and wrestling that goes along with that entire reading. Thank you, Mac. Yes, Linda. I don't know if I'm going to express this as well as I hope I do. However, I'm wonder, I think, as I always listen to the scripture, sometimes I wonder why. Why does this happen? But if you listen to the scripture, all of the things are just, those are kind of almost natural. I mean, you live, you die, you plant, you harvest, and you want to know why, but why, you, why do you die? I mean, why is someone, we've lost three members of our congregation quite recently, why? You know, why so soon? Why, why? And yet, it's the natural progression. We've been told that there is a time, and that that is going to happen in its time, and it, we don't have any control over that. We can't change that. You can't change when you're born. You can't change when you die. You can't change when you harvest. You know, if you don't get any rain, you don't harvest your crop as quickly. I don't know about war. I, I've always hoped that there wasn't a reason for a time for war, but that part I have a hard time dealing with. Well, I think what you've articulated so perfectly, Linda, is our human need to A, try to understand all this, and then second of all, to ask the why question. You know, yes, we know that the sun rises and the moon sets and it's the cycle of life and all of these things as part of it, but, and I, I, I mean, I guess what I would say is I share that struggle because on the one hand, yes, we know there's a time to be born and a time to die and that, as you say, there's really no way to determine that ourselves. That's, that's out of our control. And yet, then, sometimes people make the jump to say, well, it's in God's hands. It's God's time. <coughs> I get that, but I don't always know that. Um, I mean, people have a lot of different ideas and opinions about how this whole universe and God's spirit and our lives work. Um, I believe there are definitely things that happen by means of human beings that either speed up or um, draw out the timing of some of these things. Um, I, I don't believe that God is like a big scorekeeper up in the sky with the book that says, okay, Linda's numbers come up, there we go. You know, I, I don't believe that that happens. And yet, when untimely deaths come versus you know, I mean, we can appreciate when someone's 90 years old and they've lived a good life, we understand that that's more of a natural part of that cycle of life. But there are so many other tragic, untimely, difficult things that we hear. So how do we balance those? What do we do with that? War is a human choice. Indeed. Indeed. And, you know, that's... I'm sorry? Yes, go ahead, Merle. Give me some wisdom from my spiritual elders. Oh, don't count on the wisdom, but when we dialogue with Scripture, as Deborah is encouraging us to do, we're not, we keep in mind that we do not always deal, we don't deal literally with Scripture. We take into, we take into consideration the context the writer of Ecclesiastes 
at a particular point of view from where he was. So we're dialoguing not only with his words, but our dialogue includes the context of our scripture, you know, of, of those words. And we, we have a right to say, well, I don't agree that there's a time for war. You know, we can dialogue about that. Yes. That's, so don't forget the context. And keep in mind that as members of a liberal Christian fellowship, we do not own the scriptures literally. Mark Twain said, if you don't understand metaphor, you'll never understand what God has said to us in scriptures. And I think that's all the wisdom I have, Deborah. That's, that's good for your first response. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Joe Nancy. I realize that um, when I have heard Ecclesiastes, I have stopped at, ver you know, after verse 8, not gone on to verse 9, talking about um, the workers and their toil. Yes. And it struck me this morning how it says that work is suitable in its time, which to me goes for the past and the future, how the jobs we do change and change and have changed for the last thousands of years. But it makes it timely. And the point is that what we do, we may not do what our mothers did, we may not do what our fathers did, but we may find something that we have joy in doing. Indeed. Indeed. Next. Yes, I had somebody waiting over here. Yes. I just finished the book, 10% Happier, by Dan Harris. And what spoke, to, I just finished it last night. And what spoke to me today was the scripture that said, he's given us the ability to see the past and to look forward to the future, but he wants us to enjoy now, to take pleasure in what he's given us now. And I think we forget to do that. Yes. Was there someone else who was right there? No. Okay. I was just thinking that um, the Old Testament had more, uh, perhaps, a different understanding of violence because uh, Jesus never encouraged violence. In fact, he died instead of fighting. So I think as Christians, perhaps our understanding of war has changed as compared to in the Old Testament. Thank you. That has some merit. Absolutely. Yes. I took away the sense that most of us males during our working years did our very best to jam every project we had ahead of schedule. We were control freaks. We were expected to be, and we were rated on it. Now that I'm in my senior year, I recognize that I can't make a radish a radish before it's time. And most of the life around me is not a place where control freaks should, in fact, force their will on others. And so I'm very comfortable to let things happen in their own time and give up control to nature. You could write a book. That, I mean, that's truly, I think that's a challenge for so many of us. We get caught up. We don't want to be racing, racing, racing. And yet, all around us, the culture is such that we don't, we don't really have a choice. We're caught up whether we want to or, or understand it happening or not. So I think a continual bringing that to the front for all of us, of no matter what age or context that we're in, is wisdom for the spiritual growth of our lives. Thank you, Lee. Yes? I took the concept of war on a very personal level, that I think that there are different times in all of our lives where we have to go to battle within ourselves. And, and for me, that, that's what that passage meant, that when that time comes, we do what we have to do, and hopefully we win. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. And that, for me, is just one of the many beauties of scripture, because it's not just one dimensional, and there's not just one answer, and there's not just one understanding or um, perception. But it's almost like the microcosm, and then it builds out exponentially and continues to bring forth wisdom exactly when we hear it, what we need to hear, that that's part of that mystery of the spirit working in and through us, of God's spirit moving in and through us, so that at different points, we are able to hear what God is knowing that we need in that moment. Thank you. Rosemary. I'll just add one thought, and it's probably uh, on top of the others. It's, you know, you could see the same thing. You ever go back and read a book again and how it seems so different to you? Because you've changed, you've grown, you've learned, and you can read the scripture one day and it means one thing and another, another. And you know, the other thing is you get older, you realize you don't have to have the answer to everything. That's where faith comes in. And you say, I believe. And I just think that that's a time thing that you can't expect someone who's very young to see what you see when you, as you grow older and you experience life. And that's why it all takes such different meaning each time. You know, I remember reading Tom Sawyer when I was young and then going back and reading it again and it was a completely different book. Yes, yes. Thank you for that. I, I just will throw out as a last little comment. In its beginning, in its original form, a sermon is intended to be a dialogue. Now, obviously, we can't do that here every Sunday morning. All kinds of logistics and other kinds of reasons. Lots of different things to do in the worship service. But perhaps, if there's interest as time goes on, we might want to think about having a sermon discussion group that's after the service. So then the information that's shared both from the scriptures, mostly, as well as whatever the pastor might expound upon in that sermon, might then be an opportunity for folks to wrestle with and give their input and ask questions back and forth, because that's how we grow, that's how we learn, that's how we deepen our faith, and especially in the United Church of Christ, where there's lots of wrestling, and there is no just one answer, that there's an opportunity for us to gain from the whole fellowship of the body of Christ in this place. So I thank you for being willing to do something a little bit different this morning, and we will see how many of you say, yes, let's do that, as to whether or not we get a little more serious about finding a time we might do that. At this point, I would say thank you all so much, and may these words and thoughts that have been lifted be pleasing to God. Amen.
please be seated. It is our custom to lift up the names of those who we would hold in special prayer. These might be prayers of joy and celebration. They may be prayers for special need, for healing, for strength. I would begin our time by giving thanks to this community for the beautiful service that was supported and engaged in here yesterday in memory and honor of Brian Olson. His family was so very pleased. So we thank you all for making that possible. And I also follow that with sad news of yet another passing from our midst. Our beloved Jim Sterling passed away on Christmas Day out in California. Rosemary Worth was with him. His service is coming up this coming Friday out in California. And then after Rosemary returns, there will be um, a gathering, some type of a gathering, which we'll share that news when we have it. But in the meantime, let us continue to remember that in life and in death, we hold fast to the promises of the gospel. Amen. Other prayers? Great prayers of thanksgiving to this congregation for the love and the support to me while I've gone through all the surgery and am convalescing. I've received many wonderful cards and flowers and calls, and I'm most appreciative. Thank you. We're glad to see you here and doing so much better. Mary. I would like to ask for prayers for uh, David Jackson, EJ's husband, who was in a bad automobile accident, and his car is totaled. He has checked out of the hospital, and we pray that he, and we pray also for EJ. Of course. Um, that things will be okay and that he will heal. Thank you very much. Yes, prayers for them. Thank you. Yes, Merle. About uh, 55 years ago, I dated this woman. This woman? That was, it was early May. Uh, we had a hard time starting out, but by the middle of July, we were engaged. And I had suggested we get married in October. And she said, no, 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 it's rushing it a little bit. Let's wait till next year. So our anniversary date is January 1. <laughs> she, she gave me the choice of the day. She chose the year. So 54 years married. And it's been a blessing. Thanks be to God. Congratulations to you both. Congratulations. Yes, I have a couple in the back there. Um, I'd like to ask for prayers for those that suffer with mental health and substance abuse issues. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Over here. Oh, go ahead. But let's move the mic over here. Thank you. Go ahead, Rick. OK, thank you. Um, I just want to uh, relate to the congregation uh, what I believe to be a a uh, Christmas miracle, uh, a uh, friend of mine uh, in Lewiston at three in the morning on Christmas day, his wife uh, gave him a nudge and said, take me to the emergency room. She had a ruptured appendix. Now, as we all know, a ruptured appendix uh, years ago could have very easily have taken a life, but um, miracle of, um, of our modern medicine, she was saved and she's uh, doing well. That's uh, Steve and Kathy. Thank you. Prayers for Steve and Kathy for her recovery. Thank you. Robert. Uh, prayers of thanksgiving for all the people who have prayed and helped my mother-in-law's continued improvement. Um, prayers for those caregivers who have helped her. And prayers of God's strength to her and to her children and extended family as the transition to home in a new way is going to happen next week. Ongoing prayers for that. Thank you. I'd like to ask for uh, prayers of comfort for my niece, Jessie Smith, who's heading to New York to try to find her son, age 20, who disappeared at 4.40 p.m. on January 30th. I, just December 30th, I'm sorry. 
Thank you. Yes, prayers. At a Christmas gathering um, a short time ago, I uh, was asked a question by a friend of the family, a 37-year-old uh, male uh, with three children who just discovered he, he had stage four cancer. Um, if I had any answers for him, and Richard uh, and Danielle, I would appreciate any prayers for them. Absolutely, prayers for Richard and Danielle, thank you. Do we have prayers from the web community? How about prayers from the balcony? A prayer from the balcony for the people of Aleppo and the people in Syria, that that area of the world where we all base our roots of Christian and Jew and um, that we all come together this year and make an attempt to make the world a little safer place for all those folks. Thank you. Prayers also for the terrible tragedy that happened in, in Istanbul last night where there was a yet another terrible violent shooting in a club and uh, many people lost their lives. Uh, prayers for my sister-in-law, Jeanette. She just found out she has breast cancer and she does. She lives in Wales, but goes to a totally different church. But still, ask if we, if our church could pray for her. Absolutely. Pray. Tell me her name again. Jeanette. Jeanette. Thank you. Thank Ongoing you. prayers of healing for Jeanette and strength. You know, God knows all the needs and prayers in our hearts. Those that we are able to speak out loud, and those that get caught on the tips of our tongues. Let us take time now for some silent prayer as we continue in our prayer time. Holy One, blessed are you, O God, our God, for you have visited and redeemed your people, coming to us in the person of Jesus, delivering us from all enemies, remembering your holy covenant, the oath that you swore to our ancestors in faith. You have come to set us free that we may serve you without fear all the days of our lives. Give us your courage and your strength and an intentional awareness that this can, in fact, be manifest in our lives if we but only open ourselves to you, Holy One. You have come to give us light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, we ask that you would guide our feet in the ways of peace so that we might be peacemakers in our own lives, peacemakers in our families, our local and even global communities. Let us focus our intention as peacemakers following in Jesus' footsteps. And through your Holy Spirit, finally, we ask that we may put on compassion and kindness and humility and patience to understand and forgive one another. We pray that you would bind us together in the perfect harmony of love so that in all the ways that we strive to grow and seek to know and understand you and work for your good in the world, Holy God, we might be empowered and strengthened and emboldened to follow after the very acts and words of Jesus our Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have an opportunity now to enjoy the ministry of music, and at this time our morning offering will be received. Let us pray. Ever present God, with this offering we also present ourselves, all that we have been, all that we are, and all that we shall become, and are resolved to walk in your way. Accept us and our offering, we pray for Jesus' sake. Amen.
Dear friends, as we go forth this day, this week, into this new year, depart in peace, for you have seen God's salvation, a light for the nations. May the love of God guide you. May the word of Christ dwell richly in you, and the gift of the Spirit give you power, now and forevermore. Amen.